Okay, we are back for video number two, and I think I'm just a tiny bit early, but it will give some people time to hop on and time for me to find the video too. And then I got a great question that I want to talk about just a little bit before we get going on our second and third project. So thanks, Donna, for an awesome question. I know it takes just a minute for this to pop up into news feed, so we'll just hang out for a second. But as you hop back in, if you'll say hello, I would appreciate it so that I know everything is working. I did get it pulled up on my iPad which my iPad this morning was completely dead. It took forever for it to even come up with a little red battery. It may have been um, a week or two since I used it, so that was kind of funny. We are using the Heart and Home suite of products today, and they are just beautiful. I have really, really enjoyed creating with these products. And everything that we are using can be found in my online store at stampwithct.stampinup.net. Now, I know a lot of people that um, are watching today are demonstrators on our team. So, I want to mention that it's awesome to be part of our team and to get a discount on all of your stamping supplies. And it's always a great time to join our team. Not a, any in, a extra incentive from Stampin' Up! right now, but still a great time to join. Okay, I can tell there's a couple people here, if you don't mind. If you'll just type in hello, or that you're back, I would appreciate it. I may not be able to see comments. That would be about par for the course today. <laughs> and Dale ran to the post office and then he will be with us for the third video at 11. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for hopping back on. Oh, I see a light coming up. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. And LaDonna is back. I hopped on a couple minutes early just to try to get everything going. Donna's back. Thanks, you guys. Okay, so Donna's back, and Donna asked a great question. So before we start working on our next project, wanted to show you that I did re-punch um, my little sentiment. That's where I put my sentiment. And then I did sprinkle on some of the white matte dot, the classic dots. They probably won't really show up on camera, and they're very subtle on the card but um, I did sprinkle those on, so you have plenty of embellishments, and you can just use those if, as you want to today, if you have the kit. And then Donna asked a question on the embossed piece, whether the bumps go up or down, and I told her down, and I just thought we would look at the embossing folder right quick, the Hive embossing folder. And when you have questions like that, of course, Donna doesn't have this embossing folder right in front of her, but I can let you guys know, how do you know what's the top and bottom? Well, first of all, you do you. If you like the way it looks with the bumps up, then put it on there that way. That's what I say. But if you ever look at your embossing folders, it says Stampin' Up. That's the top of your embossing folder. So when I ran those pieces through, it pushed the bumps down into the paper. So that would be the back side of the paper. But you can use either side. But just to let you know how I determined that the bumps would be down is by looking at the embossing folder and the way that it pushes the impression in. So you've got the embossed and then the debossed side. So this is a beautiful embossing folder. I've really enjoyed using it as well. And this is one of the pieces that we're going to need for our next card. And this is a card 
um, fold that I use a good bit. It is considered a fancy fold, but it's a super straightforward fancy fold. All I've done is cut a piece of bumblebee cardstock, eight and a half by five and a half, scored it at four and a quarter, and then I simply put that back in my trimmer and cut an inch and a half off the front. So this is a great way to just really add some interest and make it a little bit more special. Um, you could certainly put the strip of designer series paper on the outside of your card if you wanted to, but it just makes it a fun fold and even more interest for whoever receives your card. You can cut whatever um, width off that you want to from the front of your card. And by doing that, you get all different kinds of looks. So this is a fold that I do a lot of. And not too long ago, we even made one on Facebook Live that had a little mechanism that folded um, underneath and then came across to the front. You could have very well done that with this card um, as well, and it would have looked really, really cute. So this is a fold that I love to do. Let's get started on getting this card put together. So this piece of cardstock was eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I cut that inch and a half off. We're still gonna burnish that fold line like we always do. And then I've got the piece of hive cardstock, just basic white cardstock that has been run through that embossing folder. And this time I do want to grab a sponge dauber. If you have a piece of sponge, that works just as well. And if you don't, I really think you could actually even bring your ink pad to your cardstock and just swipe across it very gently and add a little bit of color. So all we're doing is just adding a little bit of yellow and it's just as much or as little as you want. Now on my sample, I think I even went around and inked the edges. I know not everybody is a fan of inking edges but that can add a lot of depth to your card as well. I'll just go ahead and finish that up right quick. And I love using our sponge daubers. I think last month we applied glue using our sponge dauber, which you can use it for inking. Lots of uses. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and look down through my supplies here because I have another smaller piece of the embossed paper that I'm going to add a little bit of ink to as well. Just a little bit of color. Now you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. Now we didn't ink that on our first card and I think it looks just fine. So whatever you like. And I'm using bumblebee ink because it's bumblebee cardstock, but I think really any yellow would work for us. So I'm gonna set that piece aside. Go ahead and grab my liquid glue and I'll adhere this piece down to our front panel. And again, make sure you use plenty of adhesive since that's embossed so that you get good contact and it stays together. You don't want to send a card that doesn't stay together, right? Although sometimes I like to take cards apart that I receive so that I can figure them out. <laughs> Y'all ever do that? Okay, may need to burnish that again. Since I added that piece, it's being a little bit stubborn. Okay, so then you've got a piece of basic white that's five and a quarter by four inches that's going to go on the inside. But before we put that in, I want to add this piece of designer series paper, one of the wood grain pieces, just the B side. Now, I think it would be pretty with that greenery as well whatever you like. I did post a share thread in this group, so if you have been crafty lately, or if you do something a little bit different, I know many of you don't have the stamp set, so you're using different sentiments, 
And I love that y'all put your own spin on these projects. That just makes me so happy. Or if you make your Misty Moonlight Challenge card, you can post anything that you would like in there. And it doesn't even have to be a stamping project. I know many of you do other crafts and we just like to see what you've been up to. But definitely put your challenge projects there for me, okay? All right, ready to put this inside panel. And so your piece of designer series paper here is five and a quarter by one and three quarter, just so that it um, overlaps slightly. And I don't have any white showing when I close my card. And we are making two projects during this video. So it should be in your packet the way that you need it. Okay, I have used, I wanna say this was Stitch So Sweetly Dye to put our focal image here. And I just took a piece of designer series paper that had the wood grain, and I added that to this label piece, this die cut. And I kind of added it at an angle, but you could certainly put it on straight if you want to. Just thought that was kind of fun. And then we've got our piece that we've added the ink to, the hive piece of basic white. And again, I put that on at an angle. If you want to just mat that up and layer it, that will work too. And I'll let that dry for just a minute and bring in my stamp. And this says, thank you for inspiring me, which I love that sentiment. Y'all inspire me all the time. And I saw I got a message from Leanne that I inspire her. So that's part of what makes me happy, what I'm here for. All right, let me see if I can get this lined up a little bit better. And I hope I don't get my head in the camera. I tend to get right over, yep, that looks pretty good. I tend to get right over it when I'm stamping and I just can't do that with my equipment up above, so. But like LaDonna said, you can always flip it over. I had already put my dimensionals on there. That's exactly what I would have done because cardstock has two sides, right? If you are a little bit off on your first stamping, just flip it over. Now we'll add this. And I put this all the way over to the left side, but you know, put it wherever you like it. I just think that's such a nice sentiment. Okay. And again, we'll let that dry for a second and it's going to go just right on the front of our card. I messed up, didn't I? Okay, I'm gonna make a little adjustment. I didn't put my piece of ribbon under there, but I think I can still make it work. We'll just put it underneath the entire sentiment like that. So in your packet, you do have a piece of this um, black and white gingham ribbon. And I had used all mine up and thankfully LaDonna had a bolt that I could borrow, so thanks LD. Yep, I'm just gonna do it that way. So originally I put it under this sentiment, but you should have plenty if you did what I did to put it under the entire sentiment if you want to. So what I think I'll do is just go ahead and add that, maybe use a little stamp and Seal Plus one of my best friends to hold ribbon in place for me. If it'll come out on that embossed piece, it may not. Okay, let me grab a glue dot. Just wanna be able to hold my ribbon in place. 
one of these days, y'all, I'll do things exactly as I plan it. <laughs> I don't know when that will be. One of these days, right? But one thing I can show you is there's always a way to fix things. And it doesn't have to look exactly like mine, does it? Okay, let's just stick that down. And that's not wanting to cooperate, but we're going to make it cooperate. Okay. And I can always trim tails if I need to. Okay, that's going to work. And when I put dimensionals down to hold my focal image, it's going to hold that ribbon down a little bit better as well. So hopefully you did not make that same little oops that I did, but if you did, just put your ribbon underneath that focal image. Now I like to kind of figure out exactly where I'm going to put my greeting and then bring my dimensionals over to this side versus putting them on the back of this piece. And the reason for that is I don't want to go too far over and when I open my card, have dimensionals there. Just take those backings off right quick. And then I can add my sentiment. I think that's going to look just fine. I actually think maybe I like that better. That was a happy accident. What was that? Um, I think his name was Bob Ross, that painter. He used to say things were a happy accident. That may have been a happy accident, y'all. Okay, now I did bring in an embellishment. And I just put a couple of the black dots up at the top. I stamped with black and I was using the black and white ribbon. So I thought that looked cute to add those little dots just right up here. And I just put a larger one and a smaller one. But again, you put your dots on, your embellishments on, however you like them. Make sure that's lined up there okay and that's project number two let me see if i've got any comments here any questions you know what i'm talking about ld <laughs> no telling right oh did gail pop in hi gail glad to see you this morning okay let me know if you have any questions pretty straightforward card I really do like um, fun folds, and this is such an easy one to do. So, hope you like how that one turned out. And then let's work on our next card. Just gonna look and see if I can tell. Okay, yeah, we're doing good as far as time. Alrighty, next going to go ahead and bring in the ribbon because I want to make sure that I don't forget to add it. So this is our next card and I just love the way this one turned out. Super, super simple. Again, using a three by four piece of that designer series paper, but also being able to use the wood grain side. So you have a piece of basic white card stock and it is what I typically do, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So let me find my bone folder. I know it's right here, and we will burnish that using the thick basic white. And I'm just going to adhere this first piece of designer series paper. Nope, I'm not. I'm going to add my ribbon. <laughs> So a nice long piece of the denim ribbon this time. And if I were you, I would just work from the piece that I provided you and don't cut yet so that you have plenty. 
Now I like to just grab some scotch tape. I used to watch, um, oh gosh, what was her name? She's a crafter and she called this the cheater method. She would put the ribbon on using a piece of scotch tape. Now you can certainly use your Stampin' Seal Plus or your Stampin' Seal, a glue dot, whatever works for you. But this is just a way to conserve your ribbon a bit by putting a piece of tape or a glue dot instead of going all the way around. And what it also does is gives you a little bit of a chance to, to me, create a nicer bow because I'm not always great at tying a bow when everything's already attached to the card front. So let's go ahead now and add this to the card front. Now again, if you miss that part and you've already glued down, I think you could certainly just put a strip of the denim ribbon across there. That would look cute too. There's always a way to fix it, isn't there? I don't know that my glue is really coming out. And I only grabbed one this morning. Come on, glue. It's not coming out. Let me find a little scrap that I can get this glue going or let me grab my silicone craft sheet. That makes more sense, doesn't it? That's what I get for putting the lid on it. I was really good about putting the lid on this and I got it stopped up anyway. Okay, it's going again. Oop, now I'll have too much. Isn't that cute with the denim and the wood grain? Super simple card, but I thought it turned out great. And then you've got another piece of designer series paper with a mat of garden green. So your designer series paper is three inches by four inches. And then your garden green is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Just to give you that eighth of an inch border all the way around if you get it on there straight and that makes the math easy too doesn't it just to cut it a quarter of an inch smaller Now you can certainly pop this up if you want to. I think that that may be, nope, I just glued it down on my original card, on my sample. I'll just glue that down again. Right over the ribbon and everything. And if you want to justify it over to the right just a little bit, you can, or center it, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna pull mine over to the right just a little bit because I want to put a bow on the left side. Get it all lined up there. I think I'll go ahead and add my bow now. It just makes it a little bit easier to tie a separate bow, I think. I always make my loops big and then I can come back in and work with them and get it the way that I want it. Just seems to lay down a little bit better for me. And then once you like the way it looks, pull those tails tight. I bring the tails together to snip the ends so that they're about the same length. Just making sure I cut that good. I just love this ribbon. It's so cute. Okay, looking for my glue dots. I'm going to cover my glue right quick. 
I don't see my glue dots that I just had. There they are. And I will add that sweet little bow. Right over here. I'll keep it within the border of the card, but just right there at the edge. And it still looks like I tied it all together, but you guys know I didn't. Now you've just got some little scraps of designer series paper and a sentiment strip. And I'm using garden green to stamp my sentiment because of the mat of cardstock that I used. But you know, if you want to use black, that's perfectly fine. I think you could even use a blue since you're using the blue ribbon and that would look pretty. And I love this sentiment. It says, have a perfect birthday. How sweet is that? Let's see how I do with my stamping. <laughs> I stamped it upside down, but I think I did a pretty good job. I did. And because I'm down just to one end, I'm going to come in and snip that end off. Now it looks a little bit more even, y'all. Okay. So then I just took this, and you can add this however you want. I think there's lots of different ways that you could add this to your project. I'm just going to adhere the sentiment strip to the strip of green. Just a little bit of liquid glue. And I just have a border on the sides and at the bottom. I'm not even going to worry about making sure that that's perfect because I kind of like having that little bit of extra green there. And then I'll pop this onto this other piece of designer series paper. Maybe just leave a little bit at the bottom. Scooch that down a tiny bit. And then we're just gonna come in here and add this. Now you could pop it up if you'd like. I think I'm just going to glue it down onto my three by four piece. My bow may be in the way just a bit. Could justify it over to the right. Let's try that. So again, you do what you like, what looks pleasing to your eye. It may be different than what I do, and that's great. Now we can also come back in with our embellishments. This time I think I'm going to add some of the gray dots, and I'm just going to sprinkle them on. I usually use an odd number, but again, whatever looks good to you, go with that. Okay, that, my friends, is card number three. So we've made three pretty cards so far this morning and we have one more left to create let me bring these other ones in too card number two so one more card to create in stamp class this morning so i hope you'll join me back at 11. let me look right quick and see if by chance we have any questions 
Look, Letty joined us. Hi. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Lots of fun. Lots of fun creating cards, right? And I just think these supplies are so pretty. Becky asked me yesterday if she could use Easter sentiments with these cards, and I think that would be lovely. Okay, we have one more fun fold, and it is called a center step card. I had never seen this fold before. My um, friend and fellow demonstrator, Christina Reese, posted a video using this center step fun fold. So we will be back at 11 o'clock. Yours is already cut and scored for you, but we will show you how to do it in case you want to recreate it. It's really fun. It's something very different. I'd never seen it before, so let me know if you have. See you back at 11.